Hello and welcome back to Young for Players and welcome to back to Sh 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 Smurlock. Smurlock Smurms. Um. So I was thinking, let's go to the class and singer. I believe it was up here somewhere. Class and singer. Because we have the key for it. I distinctly remember reading the word Klassenzimmer. Is this in my imagination? Klassenzimmer! Hell yeah! Hello, sirs! Alright. Two plus two is question mark. X is two. Letter from Professor Herzog. <laughs> Dr. Gygax, as your staff informed me, you could not see me before my departure, and since you implied during our last meeting that my responsibilities at the SG would be fulfilled by you, I believe it I believe it advised to leave your word here. To believe you word here. Please understand that the mission entrusted to me by my health authorities in this country is not taken lightly and it's worth the investment they are making. That is why I inquired into the personal files of every patient, their records, and asked for the specific reasons for your refusal to admit certain patients to a class. Though this is my first assignment, I believe that these initiatives were not dealt with appropriately or in a way that similarly placed establishment would employ. Future experience will confirm as if, if this is true. But this is not the reason for my letter. Once again, I want to draw your attention to an anonymous patient whom you assigned to the laundry for which I am gratified. Three days ago, I was a witness to yet another of his wonderful reawakenings. I was attempting to explain extremely basic concepts concerning gravity to him when he answered my questions by going to write on the board in his typical mechanical manner. Then, without saying a word before I could stop him, he began writing a series of equations which greatly exceeded my own knowledge in this field. I covered them before he could erase them and uh, consulted appropriate text as my college library. Uh, told me sh to my shock. Told my shock. Told me shock. Sorry, uh, better get better at writing, dude. His equations ac accurately depicted the relative movements of celestial bodies in our universe and the mutual gravitational influences. I did not understand the half of the c the half of these calculations, but I was able to determine that they contain no errors. Based on these facts, I beg you to transfer him to the university hospital. I took the liberty of contacting a former colleague and arranged the necessary funds for his transportation and care. Uh, they hope to achieve great results in treating his amnesia as they can confront this man with people having a similar degree of their education and knowledge. Of that we will honor my request. G. Hassel. Who is this anonymous patient? Perhaps there is a file on him, as with the other patients. Stowning or chaos? Building blocks. This should prove useful. What did I just and now time to become the good Professor Schwartz and pay a visit to Wolf. Oh, yeah. What is that? Why is this a thing? Hmm. Okay, well, let's find a way down to spots. Impossible. Uh, there we go. 
save the game. Cause you know. Something's got something's bound to happen now. At this point. So, Wolf, I see you have mastered your lesson. Splendid. P -p Professor Schwartz? I congratulate you, Wolf. I cannot say the same about your other classmates. I am most unhappy with their behavior, because it seems they have been cheating. Professor Schwartz, you saw them, didn't you? I know my lessons. I always work so hard, and the others, they crib from me. I know, my boy, I know. But their leader, he is a doctor, isn't he? Yes, Professor, yes. He is the most vile member of the group. Sometimes he tries to keep me from my lessons. He says he will treat me like the others who don't speak like us and who scream so very loud when he punishes them. But I keep to my lessons and recite my tables all the day. He can't stop me. That's good, my boy. You have made me proud. Now, I need your help. Where do they meet? I must find them and make sure they get the punishment they so rightly deserve. They meet over there, but it is well hidden and only the doctor has the code. First, he makes noise with the fire near his office. Afterwards, he makes noise with the fire in front of me. And then he makes noise behind me. You will see he does not know his lessons. Thank you, Wolf. That's a clever boy. You have earned high marks this term, but for now you must try to recite your lessons in silence. Since I am the professor, I know and see everything. There is never a need to shout. As you say, Professor Schwartz. I don't need it anymore. Okay, so this is his... The one by his office. The one in front of him. And the one behind him. One behind him. This one is literally behind him. This one then? Simplicity itself. Okay. Let's see. Hello? Sick tats, dude! My apologies, but I do not understand what you are trying to say. If I may introduce myself, I am... Who you are means nothing. All that matters is your reverence to the One. You came to invoke the Great Lord with the speaking, and now I ask you, who am I, you wretched mortal? Just on the tip of my tongue. 
reread and hadn't written that are Something about light. <laughs> that your grubs go through the other stars like market in the fruit. Wait for your awakening to you. Light of the Abyss. He is the one that he chose to show us. Light of Abyss. Even your pitiful mind can find enlightenment before serving as food for the servants of chaos. Where are all those poor souls kidnapped in London? And what about the others who pass through here in their travels? Your search is in vain. You are nothing to the great lord. Soon he will heed our call, when those titans will be reassembled for the awakening of their king, the sleeping lord shall walk the earth. You and your kind will tear your flesh when you learn how your lives insult the great lord and master. You will plead for the abyss, as have all those before you who fed the Great One. Those who give their weak flesh to our Lord cry for his return. So shall you. He has lain dreaming, silent, hungry, awaiting his followers. Tremble in awe. Behold, the Great One returns! He makes so much noise. I'd better be on my way before he attracts the entire staff. Dr. Gygax? I haven't examined everything yet. I haven't examined everything yet. I can pick this lock. This lock is too complex for this tool. Uh, but was there something on the floor? Oh my god! Holy shit! The faint signs remaining on this blackboard are in phonetics. It appears that people were forced to recite some text with no real understanding of its meaning. It's a pity that the text was erased. Yeah. On the back blackboard in Gax's workroom, I found faint traces of phonetic inscriptions. It was seems people were given this text to recite, most likely by force. Use of phonetics suggests that his people aren't familiar with the language and therefore also unable to grasp its meaning. Unfortunately, the doctor erased the writing after the f after the finished with his lesson. The exact wording and meaning of the text is not clear. The method of teaching the subjects uh, on an unknown phrase for forced memorization could also explain the horrific experiments performed on the brains of the talking birds. Who is capable of repeating better than a minor bird? These birds are from the Avery. They served a purpose beyond mere decoration. 
a notebook detailing the experiments conducted by Mr. Gijax. Theory by comparing the cerebrums of talking birds and their patients. And the patients, we will find similarities in shape. Th this, these, we will find similarities in shape. That's, um, that's, you, that's eugenics. That's a real science that, is, that has since been uh, completely dismissed as fake. Um, these similarities uh, in shape will imply similar functioning. In particular, the portion of the human brain, which corresponds to that of birds, governs both vital functions common to all higher beings and the formation of articulated fa f sounds. Practice validates this theory. A patient whose cerebrum portions not replicated in the talking birds were destroyed, continued eating and producing sounds, though they had no real significance. Theory. If a patient's life is maintained and gradually parts of his cerebrum are removed, it should be possible to identify which human functions correspond to each distinct section of the cerebrum. Therefore, this procedure will identify the sole cerebral functions that serve our experiment, those that enable the individual to survive and produce precise articulated sounds. We may, we may then remove all except these core cerebral elements in our subjects. Practice validates this theory. Unfortunately, the lack of collaborations by the subjects does not allow me to isolate the part of the cerebrum corresponding to reading or acquiring new knowledge. I do not have enough expendable p patients for test subjects as most are needed for the course. I will have to find another way. Theory. By using the phonetic system, the patients, regardless of nationality, learn a specified song. However, they must repeat and commit this phonetic-based song to memory while they are in full possession of their senses. The question is, will they retain the ability to articulate this learned song after the undesired cerebral sections are removed? Practice validates this theory. The patients react favorable to the training and the use of phonetics. Destruction of the superfluous parts of the cerebrum does not adversely affect a patient's recent memories. In fact, these recent memories stay close to the surface and can be triggered by association with food. Once this association is established, the patients will recite the learned song in a continuous loop and the withholding or rewarding of a bonbon can influence the quality of that elocution further. The patients would thus be capable of fulfilling the assigned task submissively and faithfully without rebelling and while staying alive as long as possible. So he just, he just wants them to mindlessly repeat the song. I feel great pity for the patients who must have been tied to this machine. Okay. I haven't examined everything yet. I haven't examined everything yet. You haven't examined everything yet. I don't know what this guy Jax studied, but judging by his office and what I saw before, he is more dangerous than any of his patients. <laughs> Professor Guy Gat, after reading your letter, I understand that the risk of exposure by my master is great. I believe that even if we employed hair pieces, heavy top cuts, and Top coats and generous tips, nothing would slip him safely past his country's custom officials. As the great day draws near, my master's behavior will become more uncontrollable, and our plan should not risk ruin due to unwanted attention. So I ask you to light my mask to keep light my master close at hand. He will enlighten you when darkness returns to cover this place. Echoes from five New Orleans tell me our people there need more means. Make sure that they have what they need so that delivers to you are not delayed. I hope to congratulate you on the quality of your work when I receive your package on until he accepts you among his. Hold on. There is an oily stain on this letter. It smells of iodine. Interesting. Wait. On the handwritten letter, finding Dr. Guy Guys' office, there's a greasy stain apparently from an oil lamp. 
The specific coil this variety has not been in common use for some time. The person who wrote this letter must therefore have access to old stores of lamb oil. The letter is also recent, being dated a few days ago. I can infer it was posted from Europe and should have passed through countries with a reliable uh, postal system. A strong odor of iodine was also detected. This letter was also in presence of a sea air before it was posted. Unfortunately, the envelope it came in was not found. Maybe they smuggled a bunch of foreigners in order to hide Light's presence. So like, they, it was like, why did this big group of people go through all this trouble of of smuggling this one guy through countries like whatever? Like, letters finally took the guy guesses obvious. They origin from various Swiss banks and show that during these last moments, the doctor completed several sales of precious stones. Each transaction was for a greater amount. He must have a real treasure. These letters also reveal funds were transferred to a specific account, bank account in London and New Orleans. Unbelievable. These letters are from various Swiss banks and show that the doctor made several sales of precious stones over these last months and each time for higher profit. He must have access to a real treasure. I see numerous transfers were made to an account holder in the Bank of London and another in a bank here in New Orleans. I must take note of these transactions. A bank here in New Orleans. But you're not in New Orleans. You're in... You're in Switzerland. Now I'm thinking that's a kitchen thing. I've had a bag full of birds here. Three short bells and one long one. This isn't right. Perhaps if I begin again. Yeah. All right, saving the game before entering the creepy elevator. challenge here it is a primitive lock any simple metal tool should allow me to force it pardon me sir I need your help he doesn't seem to hear me M Moriarty Moriarty my worst enemy and a man who was presumed dead who could think this demon could have survived such a great fall at Reichenbach he seems a shadow of his former self. There is no doubt he has truly lost his memory and therefore cannot be a part of these events. Is this Moriarty? Why is Moriarty here? Find this outsider as quickly as possible and bring him to the treatment room. I shall take care of his memory. Professor, do you hear that voice? This man who is speaking to two others, a man of great intellect and ability, who is approaching and is even now right behind that door. You know him, Professor. Come now, Professor. You can't have forgotten so easily. Let me remind you, Professor. I am going to reveal his identity. I will tell you his name. 
You know him well, Professor. He is... Sherlock Holmes. Stand where you are. What the hell? Closed tight. Impossible. Okay. So we just sent we just sent Moriarty up there. Why? Moriarty just cameoed, I guess. We need to get out of here. At last, the laundry. First of all, I must prepare my Amos disguise. It is the imposter! He is here! I'll sort you out, buddy. Come here. The doctor is not here. We had internal concerns arise today. Herr Director is engaged with urgent hospital matters and cannot be disturbed. Very well. We will take this troublesome wretch along with us. Perhaps tomorrow the doctor and I will be able to discuss our other matter. First of all, my friend, you should know that you have been dealing with two famous professionals. Your deceit has failed, and you should know that it is impossible to confound us. Who are you? And why have you come here? What is your opinion, Watson? <laughs> <laughs> Holmes! But, but what are you doing here? And you are as white as a sheet. It seems as though you met a ghost. It's quite possible, Watson. Quite possible. You should have told me about your plans, Holmes. Definitely not, Watson. You would have acted in an unnatural manner and done everything to persuade me against my course of action. You can be sure of that. Good God, Holmes, think of the risk you took. Indeed, Watson, and I hesitate to reveal my further plans. They are likely to be far more dangerous. Will you explain? Even though I know the crux of this affair began in Europe and even perhaps in England, we have no elements indicating the when, the where and the how. Our only lead would have us travel to a continent, not our own. One that is wild and untamed in many ways. I assume that you now know the name of our next destination. New Orleans? You are quite correct, Watson. New Orleans, Louisiana, located in the wilds of America, our nemesis has a group of his men there, and we must arrive in time to stop them. We must make haste to Le Havre and book ship's passage immediately. I took precautions before our departure from Switzerland, but it is imperative we maintain the utmost secrecy regarding both our true identities and our destination. We are dealing with a cunning and powerful adversary, Watson. Quite powerful. Do you require assistance, young man? Um, bomb? Ooh! Ah, yes, young man. As a Mr. Ho, um, the big detective, it is often necessary to use all of one's little grey cells to solve great mysteries. Hercule! Hercule! Where are you? Oh, here you are. Naughty boy, come along now. Madame Poirot, your stop is coming soon. An Bro. agent will assist you with your luggage. Hercule Poirot! Who isn't French? He's Belgian. Then again, we weren't Switzerland, I guess. So. We just met Edgar Boirot. As soon as we find a hotel, That's we shall awesome. send for our bags. 
I took care to leave nothing of value Where's the on hat? board. Everything is safe Where's and secure hat? right here. Thank I even you. have a rough map of the city. Thank you. The As you can see, hat. Holmes, I prepared for every possibility. Hmm. And here we are in the new world. A whole continent ready to welcome us with open arms. Is this not invigorating, Holmes? Think of the challenge that lies ahead. Indeed, Watson, but let me remind you that we have few clues and time is not our ally, and countless lives rely upon our success. You are right, Holmes. Perhaps we should secure some local currency with our bills of exchange. At the present, we have but a few dollars at our disposal. All right. Awesome. So, a lot of stuff happened. Uh, we met Moriarty and we met Hercule Poirot, uh, who is another great detective, and I greatly recommend his stories. Um, thank you guys for watching this episode of Iron Place. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you join next time for more shenanigans. Until then, bye!